Hello everyone, so today we're finally doing the Balenciaga reference guide. Interested to learn some more? Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Caleb and on here, aside from a burgeoning Balenciaga obsession, you'll also find things like luxury shopping, reveals, reviews, and unboxings, luxury travel, daily vlogs, pretty much anything that has to do with life and style, you're gonna find right here on this channel. So before we go any further, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, give this video a thumbs up and say hi to me down in the comments. Also, don't forget to turn on the notifications so that way you're notified when I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday at 10 a.m. Central Time. Now as promised, I've been promising this video for a long time actually. Today we are finally diving in and doing a crash course Balenciaga 101 for all the new collectors or just people who are curious about the brand. This is going to be kind of like the one-stop shop for basic Balenciaga info. Hashtag basic. First, we're going to start out with history. So the Moto style that you see before you originated in, I'd say probably 2000, 2001. Nicola Gasquier, who was the creative director at Balenciaga at the time, was asked to produce a new style of bag. So at the time, bags were very rigid, very formal, not terribly exciting. And he came up with what we now know as the Moto style. So originally it was the first, with flat hardware and he produced a prototype and the powers that be at Balenciaga didn't know a good thing when they saw it and they passed on it. They were disappointed, they hated the bag and the prototype literally just sat in the workshop. That is until some models saw it. So I think it might have been Kate Moss uh, who first saw it and was like, you know, what is that bag? Is that is that new? Is that vintage? Did you find that at the flea market? Like, what is this beautiful bag? And he said, oh, you know, it's a prototype we made. They didn't like it. We probably won't produce it. It is what it is. Well, that didn't last long. So it kind of inspired Gasquier to approach the directors or whoever was in charge at the time and say, listen, will you please let me make just 25 prototypes and we can hand them out to the models, the fashion editors as like a gift, you know, just to kind of see if it had any traction. And like all things that you can't get your hands on, it got traction. So later that year, it really took off. And especially here in the States, it was nearly impossible to get one. So the only place that was carrying Balenciaga at the time was Barney's New York. They couldn't keep up with the demand. So that only made the bag that much hotter, that much more in demand, that much more of an it cult status. And here we are today. So eventually this bag was on the arm of, of every it girl, every celebrity. Nicole Richie had pretty much every bright color known to man in the collection. Kate Moss had one, like several. The Olsen twins, Paris Hilton, you name it, they had it back then. So unfortunately for the style of bag, 22 years on, they no longer produce it. However, you can still find quite a bit on the pre-owned market. And that is where I've gotten the majority, well, actually all of this from, uh, was the pre-owned market. So that's what we're gonna break down in this video. So there's lots of things that you have to take into account when collecting these bags, when buying these bags, and that's kind of what I wanna break down for you guys today. So we're gonna take a look at leather types. There's two main leather types and then a few sprinkled in between throughout the years. We're gonna look at different hardwares, different styles, how to authenticate, how to care for and store. And I asked you all to ask me questions down in the comments on my double Balenciaga unboxing, on my community post, and a lot of you came through. So I wanna make sure to hit all of those at the end with a special Q&A section. I'm not saying that I know everything. I'm not a Balenciaga expert, but I know a thing or two. And so I wanna share that knowledge with you guys. So there's gonna be chapters down below and nearly everything I'm talking about in today's, well, absolutely everything I'm talking about in today's video already has a pre previous video with like whether it's an unboxing, a review, what have you. So I'll just link my entire Balenciaga playlist down below rather than saying link down below for every single bag I mention because trust me, there's videos for all of it. All right, so let's start out with leathers. So when it comes to the Balenciaga Moto style bags, there's two most common leathers that everyone refers to. And that's gonna be Chev or goat skin or Agnew lamb skin. So the Chev leathers, those were available from the start. Uh, I think those were some of the main, I think they used some calf skin, but they also switched into goat skin eventually for the original batch of bags. And then Chev was prevalent up until 2008. And then all of a sudden they changed to lambskin. Now the school of thought behind the change. Uh, so Balenciaga was launching their US website in 2008. And of course these bags were super hot at the time. So to keep up with that demand and expansion, everyone thinks that they switched over to lambskin for I think larger hides, easier to work with, maybe cost effective. And they made a few other changes, which we'll talk about here in a bit. And and so those are gonna be your two most common leathers. Is there really much difference between the two? It depends on which school of thought you kind of find yourself in. A lot of people prefer the old, earlier Chev bags. A lot of people prefer the newer Agno bags. Now, I myself only have 
to my my belief, only the lambskin bags. Now I love lambskin leather. I think it's incredibly easy to take care of. It's hardy, it's lightweight, it's slouchy, but it keeps its shape a little bit better than what goatskin would, or so I've been told. But trust me, I would love to get my hands on some Chev or even the earlier first bags. I think that would be so much fun to have in my collection. All right, so when it comes to Balenciaga, there is literally so many hardware options. It's hard to keep track of sometimes. Luckily, I think I have the majority except for the ever elusive and hard to find first hardware, which we'll get into here in a minute. The most common when it comes to moto style bags is going to be the arena or classic hardware. This is also known as RH or regular hardware. So when you're reading descriptions, it can be a little bit confusing, especially if you know how they label it. But the most classic and common hardware is arena. So when it comes to arena, it's typically done in an antique brass, as you can see here on my city bag. Occasionally earlier on with different um, seasonal bags, it could either be done in silver or gold and also would come sometimes in the body color of the bag. <sighs> if you all remember that gorgeous magenta bag I missed out on, they also match the body of the bag sometimes too, which is so cool. I cannot believe I missed out on that bag. So the aged brass was the common style of this hardware. And then in 2010, they came out with the 10th anniversary hardware, which was the same arena style in either silver or gold, just to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the bag. A lot of people tend to favor the arena hardware just because you'll have the tassels with the most common bags like your first, your city, the weekender, and the work, you'll have a silver plaque inside, which will give you a little bit more information than the leather tags do. We'll get to that here in a minute. But my favorite, favorite, favorite hardware is probably Giant 21. I absolutely love Giant 21 hardware. So if you remember, my newest bag, the work, has the Giant 21 hardware, and I have it in the gold. I think Giant 21 gold and Giant 21 rose gold are like my two favorite combos. I absolutely love those hardwares. Now this style was only around for about five years. I think they introduced it in 2007 and quickly discontinued it in 2012, the Giant 21 size. A lot of people complain about weight issues. I mean, I don't really notice it because I don't really carry a whole lot and you have the lambskin bag, but a lot of people complain that this hardware weighs quite a bit on the bag. I don't really notice that. Now, when it comes to the Giant hardware, there are going to be two abbreviations you wanna look out for. GGH, which is Giant Gold hardware. GSH, which is Giant Silver hardware. Not very imaginative, but here we are. Those are the abbreviations. Now, like I said, this is my absolute favorite hardware, but the leather tag inside, like I said, doesn't give as much information as what the Arena Hardware Silver tags would give you. Again, we'll get to that here in a minute when we talk about authenticating in interiors. Now, another very common hardware in my collection is going to be the Giant 12. Now Giant 12 simply denotes that it's smaller than Giant 21. It's gonna be the smaller size here. And this came in two sizes. So on a real bag, or like say if it's on like the city or the work or whatnot, this hardware would be slightly larger. But then on the smaller pieces like clutches and wallets, you're going to have the smaller 12 hardware. This could come in rose gold like I have here on my blue tropical clutch, silver, which I have here on my Compagnon wallet, or bright gold, like I have here on my Rose Bonbon clutch. So this hardware I absolutely love. It stayed around a bit longer than the Giant 21. I think this probably ran till like the end of the city bag collections. So you can find a lot of these sizes. This size is a little bit harder to find, but I love it anyway. Now, when it comes to the rose gold finish, this finish was introduced in 2011. So essentially what they've done is they've just taken a dollar gold and then brushed in some kind of dark pigment in between the grooves. It doesn't really read rose gold unless you're looking at the zipper pull and the zipper teeth. Overall, it just kind of looks more aged, a little bit more of a dollar gold than what, say, like the brighter gold would have. Um, but it's a very classic look. So this was introduced in 2011. And then, of course, this is a 2012 or 2013 bag, I think. So then that finish just carried into the later Giant 12 styles as well. But you can find it in the Giant hardware as well and it's absolutely stunning. But they only ran it for one year, I think, with the Giant 21 and Rose Gold together. So it can be a little tough to find that finish. But there was a gorgeous parchment part-time on Fashion File recently and I, I had to walk away. I had to stop myself, but it was an absolutely beautiful color combo and I'll have it one day, mark my words. So another gorgeous hardware that was introduced with these collections and probably my favorite, but also the hardest, and I mean the hardest one to find, is going to be the covered hardware or GCH giant covered hardware. Eh, see what we did there? I absolutely love this hardware style, but it can be the hardest to find. I'm going to tell you why. So with this hardware style, literally all the hardware is covered in leather, hence giant covered hardware. You have the rivets covered in leather, the buckles are covered in leather, and then along with that you have this beautiful broguing style around all of the accent seam pieces. It's absolutely stunning and 
I think the only reason that I have a perfect condition piece is because it's a clutch. Now on the larger bags with like the handles flopping down, you'd have those two rivets bashing into each other. Eventually these wear through and the leather just peels away. And it is so disappointing. There is a gorgeous white midday on Fashion File right now, but it is completely butchered and it is so sad. If you want giant covered hardware, find it on a clutch or a smaller bag. Don't look for it in a wallet. You will not find a wallet in good condition with giant covered hardware just because the way it kind of, you know, moves around inside your bag and brushes up against like your phone, your keys. These are even harder to find in giant covered. I absolutely love this piece. Do I carry it enough? Absolutely not. But I'm also terrified to drop it or bash it into something like at a table at lunch and hurt the rivets. I love this bag though. Now, for some reason, this is a thicker, more waxy leather compared to my other bags, but I do know that it is lambskin as well, but it's absolutely stunning, you guys, is this not the most beautiful bag? So there are two hardware styles that I'm missing in my collection. The metallic edge, which is essentially just like your regular city bag, but it'll have the hardware metallic edge around these style points. I don't have one in my collection yet. I'm not really in a rush to get one because they just discontinued a few years ago. So typically the price is a little bit higher and I do prefer just kind of like the traditional look with the giant and the regular hardware. Now with the metallic edge, they did bring back the Chev, the goat leather, just kind of for like a thicker, more full body feel. I think they might have a little bit more structure, but they're also newer than some of these older lambskin bags. So time will tell how they hold up as far as structure goes. That is an option. Or if you wanted to go with blackout, essentially all they did was perforate the leather here at the design cues and then leave holes where the hardware would have been. It's an interesting look, but I'm not exactly in a rush to add it to my collection, but I will eventually. I mean, why not? Duh. <laughs> All right, so next up, we're going to talk about colors and styles. Now, when it comes to color, there is literally a myriad of colors, and that is one of the most important cues to help dating a Balenciaga bag. I'm gonna show you here in a minute how I dated my work bag, so we'll get into that. Now, when it comes to colors, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you every color there was, because there would literally be your summer, spring seasons, your fall and winter, and then sometimes holiday special edition. There's like a Neiman Marcus limited edition. It's too much to handle for one person. So, I'm going to link below one of my cheat sheets, the Purse Forum color chart comparison guide. It literally lists every single color, I think from like 04, 05, all the way up to maybe 2016, 2017. It is comprehensive. Nearly every color is listed. And the greatest thing too, on most seasons, they have the color of the, the color that was available that year, along with its different hardware configuration. So if you're trying to figure out, you know, a dark blue bag and giant gold hardware, you can narrow that down pretty quickly. And I was able to do that as well. Keep that in mind, that is a great resource. Now, when it comes to styles, oh my gosh, you guys, there's probably literally 30 or so moto style styles. So here in my collection, I have one lonely city bag. I'm trying to be good and staying on fashion file for a minute. Um, I just bought something major, which I'll review here in a few weeks, but the city bag is the most common. When people say, you know, Balenciaga city bag, they generally mean this kind of style. It could, they could literally be talking about a work and call it a city bag, who knows? So the city was the most common, the work was the next size up, and then you had the weekender, which I mean, is literally a weekender. It's just the work, but a bit bigger. And then below this was the first. Now, why is it called the first? You guessed it. It was the first bag Nicola made when he was introducing the Moto style bags. Those are the only four that get the silver tag on the inside. Everything else will just have a plain leather tag, but we'll, we'll look at that here in a minute. One of the most unsung bags from this collection, but one of my favorites is the brief. Now, I absolutely love the brief. I don't think it ran nearly as long as the rest of the collection did. However, for you nerds that notice these things, Fergie in her glamorous music video carries a white brief with the gold giant hardware. And then I think she carries a work as well later on in the music video. She's got two Balenciaga bags in that video. Now, again, I have the giant hardware and the arena classic hardware in the brief. So with giant hardware, you can also tell that it's giant because the handles will be a little bit thicker and a little bit bigger. Whereas on like regular hardware styles, they'll be like the thinner, more traditional style uh, handle. And then another bag in my collection that I absolutely love would be my envelope clutch. So the envelope clutch, this kind of, they, they cheated. They made this two styles. You could have the envelope clutch, which I have here, or they called it the envelope hip bag. And they literally just put on two hooks here for straps. So you could wear it crossbody. Same exact bag though. I don't really like wearing things crossbody very often. So the clutch is perfect for me. That is another very common. I think this ran the majority of the time through the Moto style collections. Now later on, and I think this was more under the Alexander Wang era, we had the clip clutches come out, which are literally just 
thinner flat clutches with the clip ring here on the side. Is there much to them? Not really, but they're very convenient to carry. And if you have like a larger tote or a work bag, you could easily use the smaller sizes for organization in there. Throw your iPad mini in there, you're good to go. Now, other honorable mentions, you have the first, which is literally the first bag. You have the town, which is slightly smaller than the city. You have the Velo, which is a beautiful kind of north-south. Could be worn crossbody, it could be worn top handle. You would also have the day, which was kind of like a slouchy hobo. The midday, which I want to add one to my collection soon. I think those are so gorgeous. It's kind of like, almost like a speedy. Think of like a speedy and you have the day, the midday bag. There was also the Twiggy, which was named after Twiggy because it was just kind of small and, and pixie like I guess and then you had the, the pom-pom which was kind of like a big tote meets a drawstring bag you had the Sunday tote the Monday tote which was bigger than the Sunday tote I mean there are literally so many bags and I haven't even named half of them so do a little research there's a really good resource on Yugi's closet where they literally name all of the different styles that are most common with this collection. So you can check them out there and I will link that down below as well. All right, so when it comes to authenticating and dating your Balenciaga bags, there's a few tips and tricks that I'm gonna share with you guys. Chief among them and most importantly is going to be the serial code inside the bag. So the easier ones to read are going to be your city bags because those are going to have the silver plaque on the inside with the regular hardware. I don't think they come with a plaque though if they have the giant hardware. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. And they only seem to really date the first city work and weekend up until about much later. And then they started introducing date codes for the other styles of bags, which is incredibly frustrating for a collector when you're trying to date and figure out what color you have in front of you. It makes it a little bit harder. So let's dive in. So typically on the earlier bags, the hardware plaque on the inside is actually 925 sterling silver. I wanna say about the same time that they made the change with the Chev leather to the Agno is when they dropped the sterling silver, but I I could be wrong about that, but I think it's about the same time. So when it comes to dating a Balenciaga bag, the, the quickest and easiest way is if they're marked with the date code, and the date code is literally a letter from the alphabet. That's going to match up with what year it comes from. They typically work backwards, and I think, I wanna say about year U is when they kind of recycled them. Again, for like the 2016 and up bags. I, I'm probably not right with the year, but I know they recycled some of them. So if you're looking at, you know, a bag that's really rough, but it says, you know, maybe it's a 2017, it's probably the earlier year. Also, you can tell by the colors, which we'll get into here in a minute. All right, you guys, so when it comes to dating my city bag, I have a year S, which is going to be for autumn, winter 2008. So right off the bat, we know it's gonna be Agno because it's later in 08. And the number on the front, they usually think that the N, the number, and the four digits after that will stand for the batch number for the leather. That hasn't really been proven, no one's quite sure, but on the back side, that is where the majority of your information is gonna be held. So at the bottom of the silver tag, you're going to have the style number, which is going to be a 115, 748, which will stand for the city bag. And then that number will then be confirmed on the back side. Again, on the purse form, there's this very handy reference tool that where they have listed all of the style numbers with what bag it's supposed to be, what kind of hardware it's supposed to be. And in most cases, what the original retail was, 2008 to 2010, I think is when they made it. So I'm gonna reference that below as well down in the description. And seriously, you guys, it is so easy. That is how you read the silver tab on a classic hardware city bag. But what if you have a leather tab? Let's get into that. So let me show you how I dated my work bag. Okay, so first and foremost, it's gonna have the giant hardware, so you guys know it's going to have the leather tag on the inside. The leather tag doesn't tell us the year though, right? Right? Okay, so on here, you'll literally have Balenciaga Paris marked on the front, and then when you flip it over, you're going to have the serial number, which mine is for the work, made in Italy. There's not a date code, batch number for the leather, very little information, but let's look at the style cues on the outside. So, first and foremost, we have the mirror. The mirror is going to tell you a lot, believe it or not. So with mine, we have the older style with the card holder on the back. So right there, we know that it's at least 2008 and older, but we still don't know what year yet, right? We've narrowed it down to that time frame. Is it Agno? Is it Chev? We're not sure yet. Next, we need to look at the color of the bag. Oftentimes, resellers will list the color correctly. Sometimes they don't. Now, in this case, they did because they listed it as a marine. This is marine blue, which is going to be a nice, rich, jewel tone of a blue. I absolutely love it. All right, so after we looked at the mirror, we can narrow it down between 2008 and earlier. Now, we know that it's not earlier than 2007. Why? Because it has the giant gold hardware. It's either 2007 or 2008, the mirror and the hardware. And then 
Marine was only produced for spring, summer. Well, actually, Marine is one of those odd colors, much like anthracite, that pop up a lot. So those are harder to date. However, Marine, with the giant gold hardware and the 2008 and earlier mirror, would have been spring, summer, 2008. That's how we're able to date the work bag. Now, can we do the same for the anthracite? Unfortunately, no. Now, it does have the earlier, the earlier mirror with the... I have the paperwork for this one? It's a Chev. How do you know? It says Chev. Oh, you have a Chev. Okay, you guys. So I have literally been lying to you this entire time. I have a Chev bag. I was literally pulling the mirror out to like be like, oh, what year is it? We don't know. It's at least 2008 and older. I forgot I had the original paperwork in here with this bag. And it is a 2007 Chev leather. Now, that is absolutely crazy. So, is there much difference? I mean, not really. This one is a little bit waxier and a little bit more shiny compared to my, my, my lambskin bags. But this has always been one of my favorite bags and I loved the leather on it. And apparently it's a Chev, so who knew? I have all the paperwork here. Okay, you guys, so I lied to you, that's cool. We're learning new stuff on this channel all the time and I have a Chev bag, all right. So we can check that off my Balenciaga collector's list. Had we not had the paperwork, we could have narrowed it down to 08 or 07 based on the mirror. And then with the hardware combo and the leather, yeah, it would be a 2007. Does it say what season on here? Season one, so a spring, summer 2007. Anthracite brief, giant gold hardware and shove leather. Who knew? I didn't. <laughs> okay, so that is a little bit on how you can date bags. Is it, is it a fail-proof science? Absolutely not. Mirrors, especially on the more common colors like anthracite or black or the carbon can, you know, become swapped out with other mirrors. They may have lost the mirror completely. In that instance, I don't buy them just because I like to have a complete set. I'm okay without having the original dust bag because I can buy the dust bags again, but I have to have like the strap, the tassels, the mirror. I have to have the whole shebang before I can pull the trigger. So that is how you would date a Balenciaga bag and read the serial cards. Okay guys, so those were just some of my tips and tricks on how to date your Balenciaga bag. It's kind of like a tree in reading the rings, or is that crazy? So now we know how to read the serial number on the tags, kind of. We know how to date the bag, but how do we authenticate the bag? A lot of you asked that question down below in my previous comments, and there are a few things that I can share with you on how to authenticate. Chief among them, the rivet. So the rivet is going to be one of the most important tell-all factors. Now the rivet itself should have little notches on the sides where it pierces into the leather and catches onto the rivet on the other side. Does that make sense? Now the original run of bags would have a smooth head, but later on you want to make sure that they have the two divots and that they're rounded. If if they're squared off, it's a fake, run away. Now, one thing that you should always, always, always notice on an authentic bag, inside the handles, they have the cord that's been knotted down at the end. So you're gonna see the knot down at the bottom of the handles, and that is especially true of the flat rivet heads. Do you always see them with the newer hardware? 90% of the time. And by 90% of the time, I mean like all the time. So always look and make sure you see the knot, especially when it's a smooth rivet, because that's gonna be on the first run of bags. They didn't always have the notch. Now, now another way to tell if it's authentic is with the bail pole on the strap of the bag. That's going to come to a nice twist at the end and have kind of a rounded, almost ovular shape to the bail pole on the strap. Now the hardware, it's not meant to look incredibly fancy. Remember these are kind of like gothic, chic, moto style, edgy bags. So the hardware is not going to be refined as say like an Hermes, a Louis Vuitton, or a Dior of the time. So expect it to not be the finest, but it should also be of high quality, if that makes sense. So on the rings for the crossbody straps on your city bags, you shouldn't see a noticeable break in the ring. If you do, run away, it's probably fake. Another thing to look for is the zipper hardware. So a lot of the times for the earlier bags up until recently, fairly recently, they were made by Lampo. Now the earlier bags, there's a lot of back and forth about, you know, when did they start using Lampo? What did the Lampo look like? For the very early iterations, you'll notice the older Lampo zippers where the Lampo is depressed into the hardware. Later on, it's debossed. So a lot of the styles I have since they're newer are going to have the newer style Lampo. Eventually they switched over to their own and it's just going to be marked with the Balenciaga B underneath. So check your zipper hardware. Another thing you're going to, going to want to look for is does the serial number match what bag it's supposed to be in? So for that you'll want to refer to the serial numbers, style numbers that I have included below in the description with the link to fashion file. That is going to be so helpful in authenticating bags because a lot of times they just have the serial number wrong. Like it's, it's supposed to be a city bag, but it has the 
serial number for a Velo or a Midday, and it just doesn't add up. So check that first as well. And then just check your Balenciaga markings on the inside of the bag. So on the stamp, the marking should be very clear, especially into the silver, and it'll have Made in Italy made on the underside. Another thing to look for, and this is key, I've actually found a few sneaky fakes with this information. So no matter the color of the exterior of the bag, the interior tag will be the same color as the exterior, but the lining, the black cotton lining, will have a black stitching line through the tag, literally right over it through the top of the tag. And if it doesn't have that, you have a fake. No matter what year, check for the black line. And then when it comes to giant hardware, a lot of the same rules still apply. So with giant hardware, let's take a look at my Chev brief. Isn't this so cool I have a Chev bag? I can't believe it. Like for a collector, everyone's always like, oh, you know, Chev leather is the best. And I'm like, I was always drawn to this bag. I, I know I'm still talking about it, but I was always so drawn to this bag. Apparently that's because it's Chev leather. So who knew? So a lot of the same rules will still apply with giant hardware, even though there are some different style cues. So you're going to want to make sure that you have the knot at the bottom of the handle on the inside. You're going to have the divots and the rivets, especially with the later edition of giant hardware in 07, it's going to have the divots. So make sure you check for that. And then with your zipper poles, they should also be Lampo or the B. And just like before, the black line will go right through the leather tag. I mean, that is the biggest telltale feature. I usually trust Yugi's Closet Fashion File and Rebag when I'm buying authentic older Balenciagas. Don't get me wrong, these were heavily faked, but you seem to see a lot more fakes on eBay just because people don't really know what they have. I don't really think they're trying to pull one over on you. I just don't think they know that it's a fake and that can burn you. But luckily you'll have PayPal in the end. But check for the black line through the tag and also very clear stamping in the leather tag on the front and the back. And that is how you authenticate Balenciaga. Okay guys, so the most important thing when it comes to collecting Balenciaga is storing and caring for your Moto style bags. I know this is supposed to be an end all be all reference video. However, for time's sake, I am not going to show you how to moisturize or condition the leather. We're actually going to do a hands-on video with that very soon. I bought a new piece, it's a little rough. Well, I'll show it to you guys. Surprise unboxing. <laughs> so this is a portemonnaie or a coin purse. I don't know what year it is. So so it's in very rough condition and I'm gonna have to do some research on it, but I got it for $53 on eBay and I think we can bring it back to life. So I'm gonna use this for a full on demonstration on how to bring your older Balenciagas back to life. That will go up very soon, probably in the next few weeks. So we'll dive into that here quickly. However, storing is the most important way to take care of your Balenciaga bags. When it comes to storing them, the very first thing I do, especially on my bags with tassels. So with tassels, these will eventually split over time. So essentially this is just two faces of leather glued together and then loop through the zipper poles to create a tassel. So eventually the glue will break down and here you can see it. So with this older anthracite brief, you can see it has the suede side on one and then the smooth leather on the other, whereas these should just be glued together. That's probably something simple I could do at home and fix it myself. So we might try that here soon. But on my city bag, they aren't split yet knock on marble. I don't want them to split. So the best way to take care of them so that way they don't get all wrinkled and gross, I like to tuck them up along the zipper track here at the top of the bag. Same for the front. We'll tuck that up around the handle and into the zipper track. Now, especially with these lighter bags, you don't want to store it with the handles down. Why? So with the aged brass hardware, a lot of times these can get vertigree or basically green disease and that can stain your leather. There's a white, the white midday on Fashion File that I keep bringing up is mint condition, but it has the H brass hardware. They stored it with the handles down and it has little green divots. I mean, it's character. I mean, these bags aren't supposed to be perfect and pristine anyway, but if you can avoid silly things like little green pimples on your bag, let's try and do that and store them correctly. So what I like to do is make sure that the handles are straight up inside the dust bag. That is going to keep it from getting that little divot from sitting on the other rivets. And it's also going to help keep verdigris at bay from staining the leather. Now, another thing is remove your strap before putting this in its dust bag. So the way, the reason that my bag is kind of relaxed here in the back is because they never removed the strap. So the weight of the strap on the back of the bag pulled down the corners, pulled it down here, and that's how you get that relaxed look. Now, some people love that. If you were an Olsen twin, you'd probably want that and some gum on the bottom and pen marks and it'd be perfect. Maybe some holes here and there. I'm not like that. I like my stuff a little bit more put together. So I always store my straps off the bags and flat in my strap drawer in my closet. 
Link down below for my IKEA PAX closet. Anyway, so make sure to remove your strap, keep your handles up, tuck your tassels in the top up in the zipper bed, and then just keep your mirror here in the front. Now another thing, very closely keep an eye on your mirror. They do crack, they are real glass, and eventually over time if you're not careful and like say you maybe you're carrying it like in the crook of your arm against your body, the leather can get stress rubs where the points of the mirror are. So be very mindful of where your mirror is. A lot of people like to remove them. Honestly, I like to keep them in there. Like if I'm having a solid at lunch, I can check my teeth real quick before I go back to work. It just makes it convenient. Tassels, zipper bed, handles up, and then in the dust bag. So when it comes to our bag collections, occasionally from time to time, I'll remove them all from their dust bag just so I can see them in their beautiful glory in my new walk-in closet. However, that is not good for your Balenciaga bags. So with this softer, I think they're aniline dyed, lambskin leather, bags, they do tend to discolor. So as you can see here on my Ardois or the gray, it is start starting to get a bit of a green tint to it just because it's yellowing, turning a little bit green. You don't really notice it on the darker colored bags as much, but you can on the lighter color bags. So for all of your Balenciagas, make sure they're in their dust bag, out of direct sunlight, and if you're driving in the car, like say you have a convertible or a sunroof open, maybe have like a like a clean white towel in your car just to put over your bag so that way it's not in direct sunlight because you will fade these very quickly, especially in like your brighter colors like the, the Rose Bonbon, the Blue Tropical and Curry, those will get faded real quick. Cover them up when they're in direct sunlight and the handles. I am knock on marble. Very lucky so far with these light colored handles. You can see there's a little bit of color turning, not quite like a Louis Vuitton, like they're not gonna really, well they do darken a bit over time, but it's gonna be from the natural oils. So when you're carrying a Balenciaga bag, and that's why my hands are so rough and gross right now because I've been carrying this beauty to work this week, don't lotion your hands when you're carrying a Balenciaga. Why? That will literally darken the handles over time. On some of the lighter bags, they are like black. Remember when I revealed this a couple weeks ago and once we got them under the studio lights, we could see how much darker these were. On a, on, a, on a dark bag, that's okay. You're not gonna notice as much. But on a bag as light as this Ardois, when it starts to darken, you're really gonna notice it. So stay away from hand sanitizers, stay away from lotions, and if your hands are getting sweaty, like wipe them off a bit because you will darken and ruin your handles. Can you do anything once they're darkened? Absolutely not, they are just, that, that's just how they are. If you try and use like a leather cleaner, conditioner, moisturizer, you will only darken them further. So don't do that. I did read once that you could use cornstarch, to lighten the, the, the handles. Am I going to be packing cornstarch onto my Balenciaga bag? Absolutely not. Uh, maybe I'll buy one on eBay that's really rough just to kind of test it. We should get a tester bag for this channel. Anyway, after you've tucked the, the tassels, put the handles up, made sure that the rivets aren't touching the leather on the handles, place them directly into the dust bag. Now this is a larger one for the work, so I wanted to get a bigger one. That way I didn't have to struggle as much. And then you just wanna put them inside the dust bag. So once you have it in there and the dust bag is closed up, just make sure that there's enough room in the closet for the handles to stand up. Or if it's a taller bag, like say the work or the weekender, make sure you have the clearance in your closet so that way they're not smashed down and that is how you care for a Balenciaga bag. Now, like I said in a separate video, we're going to really cover moisturizers and cleaning the leather and interiors, but today, just a few tips and tricks. So that brings us to our last section of the video. If you've made it this far, thank you, bonus points for you. But we're gonna host a little Q&A session for all the questions that you asked me on my community post and my last video. All right, so for the Q&A, Jennifer says, can't wait, wondering what is the best leather conditioner for Balenciaga Agno leather to prevent them from looking dry and to keep the colors vibrant? That is a great question, Jennifer. I'm gonna have to have you come back for the next video when we do a full in-depth review on leather cleaners, moisturizers on this q but very rough little coin purse. But we'll answer that question in the next video. Zane asks, is it possible to tell the difference between goat and lambskin bags? Great question, Zane. Obviously not because I've had a shove bag in my collection this entire time and didn't know. <laughs> no, but honestly, is, is there much of a difference? Like I said, it's a little bit waxier, a little bit thicker than the lambskin leather, but like it, it's not enough to like say, hey, this is a shove and hey, this is a lamb. You just kind of have to either know what you bought or like me and I'm a dum dum and didn't realize I had the, the paperwork in the bag. So there's really not a good way to tell, in my opinion anyway, but I'm sure others will disagree. Now, when it comes to styling, Lux Petite says, hey, Caleb, love your videos. Thank you, I love yours. You have a great channel. Would you recommend the Neo Classic Mini or the original Classic City mini bag? That is such a tough question. <laughs> Depends on your aesthetic. Personally, I love both. So if you have room for both in your collection, I would say get both. But I love with the newer Neo Classics, how structured they are, leather lined. They're, they're really beautiful.
beautiful and they still kind of stay pay homage to the original styling with being kind of their own new thing under Dimna's uh, style designs. However, I just love a classic uh, mini city bag. So get both. Arlie asks, what's classified as a classy versus trendy bag from the house? And what bag do you see staying for years to come? Oh, that is such a good question. So if you're asking about the moto style bags, I would say the first, the city, the work, and the weekend are going to be your classic evergreen bags that we're gonna see pretty much forever. I mean, the new bags are also designed off of it. Beautiful bags, absolutely classic. Now, if you're asking about newer stuff from the house, I would have to say the Hourglass, gorgeous. The new large editor bag, I would say, I say this, the Hourglass and the editor's bag kind of walk the line of classy and trendy. Trendy that you have that, that new Balenciaga look, classic by the fact that they have a lot of classic design cues, the structure of the Hourglass bag, the kind of both. For the more trendy bags, I would say the La Cajole is definitely a trendy bag, but I also think because it has so many of these classic design cues that we'll be able to see it for years to come. That's what I love about most about Balenciaga. Their, their stuff, it's, it's a little avant-garde and a little bit off the wall, but at the same time, it's familiar. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? But good question. I loved it. Isaac Vanity Camera says, Hello, Caleb. Love the channel. Great job to you and Zane. Question one, where is the best place to find the black wallet you own? I am assuming you mean my Compagnon wallet. I love love this wallet. I think I talk about it every time I do a Balenciaga video. So for this one, I have found them literally everywhere. You can find them on eBay. Pretty okay priced. You can find them on Fashion File, Rebag, Yugi's Closet. I'd stay away from the real real, but uh, Vezetaire generally has them. So they have the Compagnon style, which is my favorite, where the zipper goes around the wallet and it opens up like a bifold. Or they have the zip around Continental wallet, where it literally zips over the top of the wallet and it just has the accordion opening. When you're looking for my style of wallet, make sure that you have the the rivet hardware down in the zipper bed, if that makes sense. That's how you can tell the two apart if they don't have it marked correctly, Compagnon wallet. His second question, he says, do your clutches have crossbody straps? No, mine don't. So mine are just the traditional envelope style. However, they did make the hip bag where they had the strap hardware underneath the flap here. And you could still remove the strap into a clutch look if you wanted. Again, I'm not a really big crossbody fan, so I, I just have the clutch styles in my collection, but you can find them. And they're generally just as well priced as the clutches, I would say. Maybe a touch more, just because you have a little bit more desirability with the ease of wear, but I'd say probably 250 low end, 500 max, depending on condition, leather, hardware options and whatnot. So thank you for your question. Lauren Romeo, she has a lovely channel, so make sure to check her out if you haven't. She asks, where do you find the best deals on pre-loved Balenciaga bags? And which would you recommend as a first bag to a new collector? Now, if you haven't seen her wishlist video, she is looking for her first Balenciaga bag, and I'm super excited for her to add that to her collection. Now, where do I find my best deals? Fashion File, I think, is definitely best when it comes to quantity of choices. Yugi's Closet usually has a pretty good price point, but a lot of their things can be a little bit rougher than what Fashion File would typically put out. Um, but they're priced accordingly. Just make sure that in the description, if it's not pictured, that it comes with the mirror and the strap if you're doing like a city bag first. Now, when it comes to your first Balenciaga bag, especially from the Moto Style collection, I would recommend either the first if you don't carry a whole lot, the town if you carried a little bit more, or the city bag if you want a lot of room to move around in. Now I do have a review and a what fits on my city bag here on my channel, so it's gonna be down in the Balenciaga playlist below. So check that out if you haven't already. But I absolutely love, this is kind of the perfect size, quite honestly. I can get my full size wallet in here, all my odds and ends for the day, the phone and what I need, and then you also have the shoulder strap option as well. So if you're out and about and you wanna go a little bit more hands-free for a minute, you can throw it over your shoulder if you wanted. I absolutely love the city sized bag. Now, if you want it for work, I mean, quite literally, the work is perfect for that. Now, quite honestly, even though it is quite a bit larger than say the city bag, because of its shape, I've noticed I can't get a whole lot more in there than what I could with my city bag, if that makes sense. A lot of the things tend to fall over and just kind of puddle down at the bottom. Um, I absolutely love the bag and I think I would highly recommend it. In fact, I would love to add it more colors. I'm eyeing a carbon one on Fashion File right now. And um, it's a great bag, but given that it's a touch bigger than the city, actually a lot bigger now that I'm comparing them here, on my table, it doesn't quite hold as much more than what you would expect, but it does have feet, whereas the city bag does not. But really good question, and I'm really looking forward to your first Balenciaga bag, Lauren. Rated Rachel asked a few questions. So she asked a lot of questions about how to care for them and how to fix them up. We'll cover that in the upcoming video. When you fell in love with Balenciaga, which designer was in the house? Um, so originally it would have been 
Nicholas Gasquier very early on. I kind of slept on Balenciaga and didn't really get into it until the very end of the Alexander Wang era, um, just because I had found some of the older bags at the Italian outlet. Um, but I love a lot of what Dimna's done so far with the brand, and I have quite a few of his bags as well. And I just love the brand in general. I think it's it's always, you know, it's, it's fashion forward. It's looking to the future while also pulling design cues from the past. Um, I think that's especially ev evident with Dimna's recent couture show, even though a lot of it was kind of strange and avant-garde as we would kind of think of it now. But if you look back at what Cristobal Balenciaga was doing originally when the house first opened as a couturier, he was still making modern avant-garde over-the-top pieces as well. So it kind of, even though it evolves, it stays true to itself. And that's just what I love about the brand. Shani Cole from Shani Cole Handbags and Happiness. She also has a very lovely channel. She asks, which Balenciaga bag would you recommend for a girly girl? Someone with no edge in their style. Okay, Shani Cole, that is a great question. So I would definitely say you could easily do one of the clutches. Um, Typically those won't be in as vintage or as rough of condition. So like say with the Blue Tropical, I think this would be a really fun bag for like say cruise or resort season. Um, you could easily carry this to dinner in the summertime. And I think you could easily effortlessly work this into your style. Now I also think that the city bag could easily be worked into pretty much any style depending on the color and condition of the bag. So I think when it comes to Balenciaga, you just kind of have to look around and, and see really what fits your style best. Um, the Velo is also a, another great bag too that I think is often overlooked and I don't have one in my collection yet, keyword yet, but I think that's another good option too for kind of a more girly girl feminine style. Danny O from This Is Danny O, another great channel that I love, says you are influencing me to hunt for a preload Balenciaga, Caleb. Good, they're amazing, you should. Uh, thank you for your education. Question, if I wanted a small to medium daytime bag that will carry a long wallet, phone, sunglass case, small bottle of water, keys, lippy, which one would you recommend? Fabulous question and I'm gonna sound like a broken record, the city bag. So the city bag here, you can fit everything you mentioned and enough room for a little bit more. I know you have a little one, so you'll probably need some room for snacks maybe on, on busy days out. And I just think that the city bag is absolutely perfect. Keep in mind though that the city bag comes with a short so shoulder strap. So you might wanna add like maybe a, a longer strap if you wanted to go crossbody, but you absolutely could pull that look off with the city bag. So I would recommend the city bag. And if you're looking for something just a touch bigger, um, I would say the midday is another really great size. I didn't keep it, but there is that failed midday reveal here on my channel. It'll be down in the balloon. Siaga playlist. Chi Sim, another great channel that I enjoy, says, are there fakes when we shop on pre-loved bags? Absolutely. So you'll definitely want to make sure to re-watch the authentication part here in the video just before you make any purchases. Even with Fashion File, Yugi's Closet, Rebag, they all make mistakes once in a while. Um, so it's just good to kind of do your own authenticating. I think with Balenciaga fakes, they aren't terribly great. Now, granted, there's not a whole lot of branding, so they are easier to fake, but if you really know what you're looking for, you can see a lot of glaringly obvious mistakes, um, especially with the, the stamping on, on the, the serial tag on the inside. So definitely do your research and do your do, look at photos and compare. Be mindful, there are some fakes out there. Nora Humphreys says, hey, how to authenticate the bag or does the serial code mean if it translates to anything? It does. So the serial number, it's going to tell you the exact number of the bag. Uh, you can match it up to the link I have down below and make sure to rewatch the authenticating section of this video too before buying because it can be a little bit tricky but once once you have a couple in your collection it's super easy I promise. Ian J says love your new bag thank you. Uh, I love Balenciaga. I have a question I'm not sure if the letters on the tag are being rotated for example U is supposed to be 2007 yet I have a 2020 bag and it also has the letter U in it. Now that is a fantastic question so you're right U should be fall winter 2007 however yes they are re-going through the alphabet for the latest city bags. I think they are discontinued, but they are still popping up at like say outlet, Saks off fifth. And I've noticed that as well. I've even seen like a V before too on a newer bag. And so they are re going through the alphabet. With the newer bags, it's super easy to tell the difference though, because with the older, like your 07s, you're going to have the original tags here. On the newer bags, like your 2020, it's just going to have the Balenciaga sewn directly onto the lining. And then on the inside is where I believe you'll find the serial code date number. Um, I don't have any of the newer bags, but I have seen them in person, like I said, at Saks Fifth. So I know what you're talking about, and it does kind of make authenticating a little tricky, but just keep that in mind. And then our final question from Bags You Love, can you please explain how to read the inside tag code in the upcoming video? Thanks. Absolutely, super easy. You'll just wanna read the numbers and compare them to the purse form list that I have referenced below. All right, everyone. So that was the Balenciaga reference guide. As you can tell, I am a bit of a Balenciaga fanatic. Am I going to stop here? Absolutely not. I have several bags on my wish list, but I'm trying to be good. Uh <laughs> 
<laughs> I just love the brand, you guys. It's it's beautiful, it's high quality, it doesn't scream what brand it is, while at the same time, those who know, know. It's, I, I love everything about it. The quality is there, the history, the design. It's just such a fabulous brand, and I love the style and design. So I highly recommend that you go out and buy a Balenciaga. If you don't have one yet, go ahead and buy your first. Let me know down in the comments what you get. It's, it's a brand I absolutely love, and with the Y2K styles kind of progressing, I, I really think that this is going to be a brand that we're going to be seeing a huge resurgence in. I mean, I, I'd be totally here if Balenciaga wants to re-release the collection. I would love one or two more brand new ones, but like I said, great brand, love it. Buy one if you don't have one already. You can't go wrong. They're fabulous bags. Now, if there are any other questions that you have that I didn't quite touch on in this video, let me know down in the comments. Keep in mind, we're going to be filming an actual in-person moisturizing, conditioning, leather episode and cleaning a Balenciaga bag. I haven't really done it before, so I didn't want to give you guys any tips that I wouldn't actually try myself. So I got a little coin purse here that we're gonna work on. Like I said, let me know down in the comments if there's any other questions. If I got some of the information wrong, let me know that as well. I just, I love learning new things, especially about Balenciaga, so I will not be offended, but I might argue a little bit. Anyway, thank you guys so much. I know it was a long video. It's been promised for a while. I hope it answered some questions. And with that, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.